Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romance recommendations with Tortured Heroes. I did Tortured Heroines last month so I thought I'd do some Tortured Heroes. Um, these are heroes that have gone through quite a lot emotionally, physically, mentally um, and their romance stories and them finally finding the love of their life. So. Let's get into these 10 recommendations and these 10 very broody, gruff heroes. The first one that I have is Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. This is the second book in her um, Brutal Birthright series. This is her Mafia Roommate series, about uh, mainly about these two Mafia families and them finding their people, the love of their lives. Um, but this one is about Mikolaj, who is the head of the Polish Mafia. He is newly, newly the head of the Polish Mafia because his adoptive father, who was the head of the Mafia, was killed by um, the hero from book one in this series. And Miko is determined to get revenge and he decides to kidnap that man's younger sister named Nessa. Nessa is the heroine of this book and she does get kidnapped and basically locked up in a tower in his mansion. And this is very Beauty and the Beast-esque. It's a reimagining of it. She ends up slowly falling for her captor, Miko. Nessa is also a dancer and Miko is like basically enthralled by her whenever she dances. And um, that's how she passes the time in the mansion. Throughout her captivity, they end up falling in love with each other. And Miko this whole time is very, very dead set about like, having this end in her death he's like she's gonna die at the end of this because it's gonna be a life for a life this family murdered my father and so i'm gonna murder one of them um but then once he starts falling for her he's like okay bets off she's gonna be mine instead <laughs> like um he's very adamant in nessa being his um but miko has gone through quite a lot um especially before he was adopted by this man um and even during his adoption, like when he's a part of this family, like he goes through a lot. Being a ma in a mafia family is not like rainbows and butterflies, obviously. Um, so he has gone through a lot, but Nessa is able to soften him and show him the beauty in life again. Next, I have Falling from the Sky by Serena Bowen. This is about um, Hank and Callie. Hank in here is an Olympic professional, I think snowboarder. Yeah, snowboarder. And he got in a really bad accident to a point where he is now uh, paralyzed from the waist down and this is his romance with Callie who is his physical therapist. Their romance is obviously forbidden because she is his doctor like that's like a, a no-no you don't date the doctor okay the doctor doesn't date a patient and they're finding it very difficult to stop thinking about each other and stop wanting to be around each other. I loved reading about Hank and what he's gone through in life, um, he is very, very hardened by what happened to him and his accident. He was literally in the Olympics and was on the way to be in there again. And this accident kind of stopped all of those plans that he had. And he thought basically his life was over. But then he really wants at one point to get 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 back to himself. And um, Callie helps him do that. So um, I love this one. It's very underrated. I know this is the second book in a series. I personally didn't like book one, so and you can totally skip book one <laughs> if you want to. Um, they don't have like any correlation, like really at all. So um, I really recommend it if you're wanting a different sport romance because you're not really reading ones um, with heroes who are paralyzed and um, snowboarders. So another mafia one that I have is Hidden Truths by Neva Altaj. This is the third book in her Perfectly Imperfect series. This is the romance between Sergey and Angelina. So you read about, I think in book two in the series, um, Sergei saves this woman from a burning truck. She is like malnourished, has been locked in the back of this truck. He doesn't know who she is. So he takes her back to his home. But the moment that he sees her though, he's like very possessive. He's like, this woman is mine. She is mine. She's not leaving my sight. Um, and then once she finally wakes up in his home, he realizes like she's the daughter of like a rivaling mafia boss guy. He's not gonna let her go. So um, she's definitely kidnapped in his home. Sergei has experienced quite a lot in his life. Um, he even has these blackout moments where he potentially hurts 
others and could hurt himself. And Angelina is the only one that is able to calm him from that state that he's in. Um, it's kind of like a PTSD moment, if you will. I don't really know like what it's called, um, but he basically has like a blackout where he's not able to control himself. Like his mind goes elsewhere. He's been in this world, unaliving people, torturing people since he was 14. And so that definitely can damage the psyche, <laughs> can definitely not be great for a person. Um, so Sergey is dealing with that and thinks that nothing is going on um, when that Angelina is there to help calm him and be there for him. She was the only person that's able to do that. So a great book, a part of this mafia romance series. Next I have Rush by Emma Scott. This one is about Charlotte and Noah. So Charlotte lives in New York. She's a recent Juilliard graduate, but she's struggling to make ends meet living in New York. She has like a billion roommates. She doesn't want to really live with them anymore because they're not the most respectful. Um, and she just, she, she needs more money. So she ends up getting this job as a live-in caretaker for this man named Noah. She's expecting this old man. She's going to have to like take care of, but she is shocked when she finds out like he is like her age, like in her, in his mid twenties, but he needs a caretaker or his family thinks he needs a caretaker because he is blind. Noah is very grumpy and hates the world. Like he absolutely hates the world. He got in an accident a year ago, I want to say, and has completely shut off himself and other people and essentially just wants to stare at a wall all day. Like, like, like do nothing all day. He doesn't think he can do anything. Um, before the accident, he was a extreme sport, like article writer guy. Um, he would do extreme sports, like jump off cliffs and do like adrenaline junkie stuff and write fun articles about them. Like he was very popular, very famous. Uh, but then during one of his cliff jumps, he ends up injuring himself. And from that point on, he is not able to see. And so Charlotte is there hired by his family to help take care of him. And he is fighting it tooth and nail. He's like, I don't need somebody to take care of me. I'm doing perfectly fine on my own. Um, but Charlotte is there regardless. She's like, I've been paid to take care of you. So this is gonna happen. We're gonna open the drapes. We're going to clean this place up. We're gonna give you a shave. Like we are going to do this. You're gonna have a great life. She helps him see the beauty in life even when he can't like physically see it. He could still do the things he loves to do just in different ways that's more accessible to him. I love this book so much. I will shout loud and proud about it from the rooftops. More people, more people need to read it. Now I know I said at the beginning of this video that you have a bunch of tortured heroes that are grump and grumpy. This guy is the total opposite <laughs> from Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. Years ago, Gabriel was kidnapped by a man and assaulted as a child. And a few years ago, he ended up escaping that life, um, got saved. Um, but he hasn't really been the same since. He really would love a family and a wife and he wants that, but he's triggered. Like people touching him triggers him. Even just someone like touching his shoulder or his hand, like he like flinches and he's not like 100% ready for that, even though he wants it. So he's like, okay, I need to be more comfortable around people touching me. So he goes to Crystal who works in a certain type of club, okay? Crystal, I talked about her in my tortured heroine video. Um, she comes from a very, very, very troubled past herself, um, but she has the more grumpy approach to it. And Gabriel is more optimistic. He's like, I'm going to make the most out of what life has brought me, you know? Um, so he goes up to Crystal and is like, I will pay you to just like help me get more familiar and be more comfortable around someone touching me, whether it be just holding my hand, sitting next to me. Um, like I, 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 I want to be more comfortable around people. Um, at first Crystal declines, but then something happens to where she accepts. And then at one point Crystal gets in an accident, if you will, she gets beaten up by these men behind the club she works at. Um, and Gabriel's there to save her and is there to have a spare room and to take care of her at his home. And he's like, I'm gonna help take care of you. It's gonna be fine. And even though Gabriel has gone through these traumatic, horrible things, he's still optimistic about the world and Crystal cannot understand that at all cannot understand it at all. So um, this is about their love story and their romance. Again, a beautiful book. If you want a historical romance, I have Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare. Um, the hero in here is definitely like gruff and grumpy, but he's actually absolutely hilarious. This book is so funny. This is a part of the Spindle Cove series, which is one of my favorite series, like historical romance series ever. It's so stinking funny. Griff is our hero in here and he is a duke. 
and his mother really would love him to get married so she could be a grandma already, okay? And so um, she ends up taking him to Spinster Cove or Spindle Cove um, and ends up telling him like they walk into this um, like drinking establishment, if you will, and tells him like, okay, pick any of the women here. Um, any of the ones, like the one you're most attracted to, we're going to take her back to London and I'm going to make her into a duchess. We're going to do duchess lessons. Like she's going to be the perfect duchess. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to pick the barmaid <laughs> because she's going to do a horrible job. <laughs> he ends up pulling Pauline, the barmaid aside and is like, hey, okay, if you're the worst duchess possible, like, like I'm going to give you a lot of money. Like we're going to do these duchess lessons for like a week. And then um, I'm going to bring you back home and I'll give you a lot of money if you're like the worst stuff as possible because I don't need a wife. And she's like, bet, I want to open a bookstore. So I'm going to need that money. <laughs> so um, she agrees to go along with it. And um, she is not the most excited about this because she's not a refined lady at all. She's not what she deems Duchess material. But then while she is Getting to know Griff and his mother, she ends up actually falling for him. They end up falling for each other, even though they shouldn't. They have this grand plan, okay? And they don't want to ruin it. They didn't want to ruin it, but they end up falling for each other anyway. Griff's backstory is absolutely heartbreaking in what he goes through, why he's a damaged, tortured hero. That gets revealed while you read. I don't want to spoil it, but it's absolutely heartbreaking. And I understand why he is the way he is and why he doesn't want a wife. Um, so it was totally understandable, but yeah, a great read that will also like make you laugh your butt off because Tessa Dare knows how to write a funny romance. <laughs> Next, I have another historical. This is Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott, one of my favorite books of the year. It is so good. This is the epitome of an enemies to lovers romance. Okay, this is about Lord Sin and Lady Callie. So Lord Sin is going through a lot, okay? His wife just died. And there are these articles in this paper, basically from his point of view, talking about all of the debauched, horrible, sinful things he's done, um, which include like scandalous things with women, murder, like horrible, horrible things. Okay. He didn't write those, but everyone thinks that he did. He did not write those. He hasn't done any of those things. Um, and then he finds out who's been actually writing like as him and he finds out it's Lady Callie. So he decides to kidnap her kidnap her, take her to an estate far away from London. And I was like, you're going to stay in this estate with me until you agree to be my wife because no other woman will marry me now. You've made up these rumors about me and um, you're going to marry me instead because I need a wife and you owe me essentially. <laughs> um, so this is their like hate to love romance. Lady Callie thinks that Lord Sin is responsible for her brother's death. So that's why she's been writing all these articles and stuff, but he's not. Lord Sin has gone through quite a lot in here. I don't really want to go into it. I don't want to spoil it. But this definitely had like Lady Whistledown vibes, like from Bridgerton, definitely had those vibes. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this one. One of my favorite books of the year for a reason. A fantasy romance is Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. I love this book, Grace Draven. I love her writing so much, okay? This is the romance between Jolene and Azarion. I've talked about this book quite a lot on my channel, I know, but I love it. This is about Jolene, who is a witch and she lives in this village um, that's a part of this empire and the empress, the emperor, um, basically force each village to sacrifice a woman once a year um, during this event and they're going to be burned at the stake and in exchange they won't murder everybody in their village. So um, Jolene actually no one knows this but she's been glamoring herself as a new person. She has these powers been glamoring herself as a new person every year because she cannot be burned by fire. No one knows this though and like magic is forbidden in the empire. So for the past like five years she's been dis disguising herself as a new woman to be burned at the stake so no one actually has to die. Azerion is a gladiator slave a part of the empire and is the first person to realize that he's seen this woman before. Like she is like this quality about her that is very familiar. Finds out it's the same woman he saw years before and is like this woman has magic. She's gonna get me out of here. I need to. He ends up kidnapping her and is like, "You're gonna get me out of here. It's gonna happen. Like you're, I'm forcing you." So he ends up kidnapping her and taking her back to his kingdom that he is supposed to be like the king of. But someone took his throne and basically sold him into slavery. He does have a very troubled past. He does have a like traumatic past because of what he's gone through. Like someone he thought he could trust betrayed him and sold him into slavery, gladiator slavery. And the Empress basically saw him as a toy to be used like physically and emotionally. Like 
he's gone through a lot. But these two banter and bicker during their trek back to his kingdom like all the time it's 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 funny at times but it definitely does have a serious moments because of what both of them have gone through and lastly i do want to mention two ruby dixon books so they're two alien romances so i thought i'd mention these two. First is when she belongs my favorite ruby dixon book so uh, i love this one so much this is a grumpy sunshine romance between sophie and jurok um jurok is actually a alien war veteran so he has cybernetic limbs and parts to him and he is very grumpy and gruff and reclusive just wants to spend his whole life alone on an abandoned asteroid because that's he thinks that's all he deserves but then Sophie a human woman enters the picture and he's forced to interact with people again talk to them and ends up falling for this very beautiful sweet human woman I love this book so much um and then Willa's Beast is the third book in the Ice Home series which is the spinoff to Ice Planet Barbarians it takes place on the same planet. Ren is our hero and he was also a gladiator slave, an alien gladiator slave, and that's all he really knows in life. And this is about sweet, sweet Willa, like befriending him when no one else will. Like ugh. both these heroes have gone through a lot, um, but these are two of my favorite Ruby Dixon books. So I love them. Please pick them up. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romances with tortured heroes in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, what are you going to do? Let's do a star emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.